will be a quick review of a couple of blunt spears made by Get Dressed for Battle. Uh, these spears obviously are blunt, uh, if you notice the big swell at the top to prevent any penetration. Uh, they are made of um, a high carbon spring steel. Um, it, though it's not listed on their website, I know this because of the sparks formed when grinding. Uh, you can sort of tell what grade of steel it is by that, so I've kind of approximated that it's a high carbon spring steel. Um, fairly similar to that of like a car coil spring. Um, the blunt tip on it is very good for stopping penetration. Uh, some of the other spears in the market that are uh, used for reenactment um, that are more or less just a rounded sword tip type edge uh, have been known to, to penetrate things if they're thrust a little hard. Uh, the most that these do is uh, cause bruising. Um, they do still cause a lot of bruising and, and quite a bit of pain, um, but at least there's no penetration that's going to you know, actually stab somebody or run somebody through with a spear. Um, this spearhead is perfect for somebody looking for a one-handed spear. Uh, it is basically you know, your, your basic spear point. Uh, but it also is small enough that it doesn't add too much weight to the tip uh, so that when you're using it with spear and shield, it's not going to be too much of a problem. Uh, this one, by the standards of the society that I'm with, is two-handed only, only because of the increased risk of hurting somebody with the wings. Uh, but the wings are great for hooking shields uh, and, and also parrying other weapons. Um, so that's, that's sort of an advantage, but it's also kind of a disadvantage a little bit uh, because they do get caught on things. Um, this is also a decent spear for, for hewing, but again, the society prefers that you don't hew with it with the wings only because if you hit somebody with that, that's actually a pretty uh, painful thing to get hit with. Um, these ones are about a year old, so the design has actually changed a little bit. Instead of being this little piece of, uh, of round stock that gets welded to the end, uh, though it's a full penetration weld and it's very strong because it makes it essentially one chunk of metal, um, the new design is better. Uh, it's, it's rounded over and, and it's a lot, a lot more finished. Um, and when we bought these, uh, they were basically called um, or known as the Cult of Athena Special among some of the reenactors around here, um, only because on that website they didn't have the, uh, the Get Dressed for Battle name on them. Now they do. Um, so now we can we know what brand they are and we know it's from a repu reputable company. Um, and so basically what, what you would do with one of these when you get it, uh, all of the, the edges and everything uh, come square. Uh, so all of that has to be rounded off. It's probably this one was probably a 10 minute job with a file. It didn't, didn't take very long at all. Uh, then you need to find yourself a shaft uh, because it ships just the point. Um, and in, in this case, I just found some, some sticks that were uh, saplings that had come down in, a, in an ice storm a couple years ago uh, and just you know turned them into to that and riveted them on with a nail. Uh, it's, it's really not too much of a, uh, of a, a big project. You really only need uh, a basically just a sharp knife to carve the uh, part that goes into the socket down. Uh, it's a nice taper. Um, you need a drill to drill the hole, and I mean that could even be one of those little hand crank drills. Uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be anything too fancy. Um, you need a, obviously a drill bit, and you need a nail and a hammer. Um, you could actually rivet this over with a um, with a, a claw hammer, but a ball peen hammer makes it a lot easier. Then you know something to to hammer on, uh, like an anvil or a big chunk of metal or something. Um, and that's actually really all the tools you need, apart from a file, which any person who's getting into reenactment should get um, because it's it's a valuable tool for maintaining your weapons. Um, I actually recommend. Uh, Nicholson Axe Files. Uh, it's it's a flat file that has two sides to it. One is a bastard cut file. The other one's a smooth cut file. So you can remove a lot of material very quickly with the bastard side. And then on the other side, 
uh, it actually gives you a very, very fine cut uh, and a very smooth, smooth finish, so then you wouldn't need to really go any farther than just the file. Um, they also have a very strong temper in them, so that they, you know, they can cut the hardened steel in a bit of an axe. So the steel of, of reenacting weapons is almost like butter compared to that. Uh, so that is about it for this. I actually really highly recommend these for anyone interested in um, spear in reenactment combat. Uh, they're very affordable. This one costs about 20 bucks. The other one I think was closer to 25 But the full range of them really only go from $20 to $30. Um, and then the amount of um, time and, and everything you need to put into the shaft. Uh, you, you can use doweling and stuff. You can go so far as to derive a shaft out of a, an actual log. Um, or you can go with more of like a coppiced pole, um, which, which I prefer. And it suits the character that I portray a little better. <laughs> Ran out of room on the memory card. Uh, but anyway, I, I actually uh, I prefer the, uh, the coppiced poles just because being a whole, whole tree, uh, they tend to be a little bit stronger. Uh, the only problem is it's, bit of, it's a bit of a chore to find one that is uh, cylindrical enough and doesn't have a whole lot of taper in it. Um, if you have too much taper, you'll either end up with a spear that's very tip-heavy or one that uh, um, is very butt-heavy and then, depending on how you, how you taper it, also finding one that's straight is a bit of a challenge. Uh, but if, as long as the point is in line with where your hands are, uh, then it's not so much of an issue. If there's a bit of a bend in it, um, and you can sort of straighten the bends as well. Uh, you can you can apply pressure to it as it dries uh, to to take the bends out a little bit, um, but finding one that's mostly straight is a very valuable thing. Uh, this particular wood is a type of beech. Uh, it's very heavy, very dense, very strong, um, and it actually this spear feels like a razor blade strapped to a bow staff. Um, it's just a, a very interesting combination. Um, so these things are very affordable. Uh, they're pretty safe for, for what they are. Uh, thrusting weapons are still very uh, tricky to use because you can't, it's, it's harder to pull your blows uh, in, a, in a safe way. Uh, so it's, it's something you have to, tr to train a lot with. Um, but it's, it's a very affordable option for a weapon. Um, these are also very well made. They're very tough. Um, this particular steel uh, doesn't seem to rust as easily as some other steels that, that uh, things are made of. Um, but it's definitely not stainless. It, it does it does rust. It does uh, tarnish up a little bit. Um, so that's about it. Uh, thank you for watching. And if you like what you see, don't hesitate to like, subscribe, share the videos. Everything, uh, and feel free to leave comments. Thank you.